Video games are expensive. You see the PS5, the Xbox Series X, they're going for 500 bucks. I mean, you pay 350 to Nintendo for a calculator these days. It's crazy. But forget just the console prices. A lot of the time you're paying $60 for a base game these days and 70 because games cost more to make than ever before. How about you stop wasting all your money on stupid graphics? Hmm? Never mind the fact that 60 or 70 bucks doesn't actually get you the whole game these days. You got DLC, battle passes, expansions, microtransactions, which are actually more like macro transactions, you name it. These companies will squeeze every last penny, cent, every little coin you got left in your wallet. They will wring you dry. That all sounds bad, but don't worry, I got you. This is the ultimate guide to playing games cheaply. First off, if you have a console that plays physical games, go to eBay and get used games. I do this all the time for my Switch. I go on there, buy a game that isn't that old, maybe like a year old for 30, 35 bucks. I play it all the way through and then if I know I'm not gonna replay it because you know, backlog's going on, I don't got time to replay stuff. I resell it for 30 to 35 bucks because the value hasn't changed much in the few weeks or months that I had it. That's basically playing a game for free. Additionally, yeah, if you want to keep the games, you can keep them. And frankly, because you can see the condition that they're in on eBay, right? You can see pictures and ask questions to the seller. It's a lot less of a gamble than going to GameStop for used games, which I really can't recommend unless you go in person. Don't buy used GameStop games online because you have no idea what they're going to send you. Go to eBay for used games and make sure you find good copies. Now, you haven't thought about this one very much in recent years, I'm sure, but Gamefly is still a great option for game rentals. The basic budget plan is only $9 a month and lets you rent one game at a time for as long as you want and you can get unlimited rentals. You can rent that one game, play it, finish it, send it back in two days and get a whole other one. Now the standard plan is $16 a month and still only lets you rent one game at a time but it also now includes being able to rent brand new games that just came out and when there's upcoming big releases you can reserve one for you to be sent to you on day one. I briefly looked at Gamefly's used games when I was doing research for this video and they do seem to have decent prices but again I'm not sure what the quality is, so definitely do more research into that yourself before you buy any from them. Renting is great though. Number three, subscription services. They're everywhere these days. You have Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Peacock, Paramount, who's actually subscribing to some of those, HBO Max. I mean, there's a thousand subscription services out there for TV and movies, but we also have a pretty good amount for games. The one that really popularized this whole idea was Xbox Game Pass, and I still think it's the best deal here. If you have an Xbox console, for $15 a month, you can get Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which includes Xbox Live Gold, which lets you play games online, and it has the base Xbox Game Pass subscription, which gets you hundreds of games, day one games, on release, first, second, they're right there. Not sure how that's financially possible. I guess Big Papa Microsoft is just throwing out money. And you get access to the basic EA Play service, which gives you a bunch of EA games to play. It really is an insane value. On PC, it's $10 a month, and you get all the same games, all that, you just don't need Xbox Live Gold because playing online on PC is free. Yeah, this really is the best option if you have access to it, but there is another great alternative. PlayStation Plus is Sony's answer to Xbox's wildly successful Game Pass, and it is also a very good deal. It has three price tiers, and I think the middle one, Extra, is the best deal. It lets you play multiplayer games online and also gives you access to hundreds of games in a big catalog that Sony's built up. And a lot of times, a few months after Sony's big first party releases come out, they actually go onto the service. So you might play sometime next year, Spider-Man 2 on that service, just included with it. You might get God of War or Horizon or something on there. It's really great games. If you have a PlayStation, you absolutely should get this. Oh, Nintendo Switch Online, what a service. Really a disservice. It's not good. It's not good at all. You can pay up to $50 to get access to games that haven't been upgraded or updated for modern controls in any way, shape, or form. A small handful of games is hardly worth a $50 subscription per year. I'm sorry, this service is awful. If you really have a lot of free time and you want to play a ton of extremely similar open world games, more power to you. You can get the Ubisoft subscription service, Ubisoft Plus on PC. Now, that does mean you have to deal with Ubisoft Connect, which is quite possibly the worst piece of software that any gamer interacts with on a regular basis, or at all. But for $15 a month, you have access to Ubisoft's whole library, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Watch Dogs, The Division, Ghost Recon, everything you want is on there. Go 
Spend your thousands of hours in the open worlds of Ubisoft and enjoy yourself. Now for $15 a month, you can get EA Play Pro, which gets you access to all their games. You can play brand new games full on days before they even come out. I mean, talk about day one, it's like day negative three. If you're a big fan of EA games, this is probably the way to go, at least for a couple months to just blast through all the games you want to play. Number four, sales. Sales are the spice of life. Talking about sales feels a little basic, but hear me out. If you build up a little bit of a backlog, I'm not talking too much. If you're completely out of control, I might refer you to my backlogs video. But otherwise, if you go into a sale like the Steam sales or Black Friday, you just go to Best Buy, GameStop or something, pick up a, a few games, maybe three or four games, that can last you quite a while until the next sale. You don't have to pay full price for anything if you don't want to. If you're patient and you wait for the games you want to go on sale, you can get them for great deals. I'm more of a PC gamer myself, so I'm always looking out for the big four Steam sales. The winter, spring, summer, autumn sales are always big things. Stuff is going 50, 60, 70% off and it's a great time to pick up games. Usually, I score big in the summer and the winter sales, and those games pretty much carry me for the rest of the year. Otherwise, during Black Friday and Christmas, you just gotta go ham if you're getting physical copies of games because they go on big, big sales during those times. Always be checking the eShops on Nintendo, the, you know, the stores on PlayStation and Xbox for sales. They pop up all the time. You just gotta be vigilant, you know, have a, a list of games you wanna check out and just stay on top of it. The Epic Game Store always has sales going on just like Steam and Ubisoft Connect really frequently puts their games on massive price cuts like 60 to 80 percent. My cousin and I got Far Cry 6 not terribly long after it came out, maybe a few months for like 20 bucks. So, you know, look out for those kind of sales. Yeah, I'm sorry so much of this is PC based, but that's where I do a majority of my gaming if I'm not on the Nintendo Switch and that's just how it is. Number five, Humble Bundle. This is honestly a pretty magical site. If you go on there, they do just straight up sell games and have good sales sometimes, but the big thing for me are the bundles. You can go on there and see maybe two or three bundles at a time that include games. And basically how it works is you contribute a different amount of money for each level that you want. For instance, level one might be $2. You donate that and you get one game from the bundle and it'll tell you which one. At the $15 amount, you might get three games from the bundle. And then if you go all out and spend whatever the highest level is, let's say 45 bucks, you'll get like 10 games from there. You might not want every game in there, but I have seen times, like for me as someone who enjoys fighting games, there have been some fighting bundles with older fighting games with 10 to 15 games in there for 30 bucks. That's an incredible value. Definitely check that periodically just to see what the bundles are and see if there's anything in there worth it for you because even if you only want two of the three games, they're usually way cheaper than just buying them on a sale. I don't know how it works, it's crazy. Number six, Green Man Gaming. This is a site that sells game keys for other platforms, but at a discounted rate. It's totally legit, not a gray market marketplace like some other places I will not be mentioning today. They're officially recognized all that, you're good. You can frequently get new $60 games here for 50 bucks. I did that for Elden Ring and Hogwarts Legacy. Got them for 50 bucks right when they came out. I mean, why pay 60 if I don't have to? Other than that, they're always running sales too for Steam games, Epic games. So make sure to check into Green Man Gaming too if you're looking for a certain game or if you just wanna scroll through and see what the deals are. Number seven, this is the one a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm gonna talk a little bit about emulation, but not where to get things because I don't want any big red companies that I've already taken stabs at to come after me. Please follow the law. I'm just gonna tell you about some devices that'll let you play emulators for really, really cheap if you don't wanna use a phone or you don't have a computer or anything. The first one is a company called Anbernic. They make a whole lot of different handheld emulation devices, but the one I want to mention specifically is the RG35XX. Great name. It costs 56 bucks the last time I checked, and this is a little tiny handheld device, but it comes pre-installed with emulators and a whole bunch of games, which somehow works, and it's a great time. It can't play, you know, really intense emulators like the PS3 or the Xbox 360, but older games for sure. If you're going to get one, make sure that it can run the systems that you're interested in playing. In. A very popular one is the Miu Mini. Unfortunately, it is sold out everywhere, but the Miu Mini Plus comes in at about 70 bucks and comes pre-installed with a bunch of games as well. This also has a very small form factor. Just slip it in your pocket. It comes with a whole ton of emulators and games. It's a great time. Next, I want to mention the most expensive thing on this list, but this is honestly a great machine. It's hard to track down a specific price for this one, but when I checked, the Ein Odin was about $280 off sale. It was on sale, but I didn't want to mention that in case you're looking at this afterwards. 
For 280 bucks, you can get a machine that can play GameCube and PS2 games very well. And right now, we know there is a huge resurgence in the popularity of GameCube games, so buying the actual physical discs is going to be very expensive, but getting them on here through different means, like dumping your old games, right? is a great option. For 150 bucks, you can get the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, which is decently powerful for what it is, has a middle-sized form factor, you know, nice to hold in your hands, and it can play PS1 games, but make sure that it can play the systems you're interested in. Number eight, free games. Don't overlook the price of free. There's a whole ton of free games. Some of them are good, some of them are, are garbage. I'm gonna point out some games that I might not be personally into, but I recognize as being pretty good games. We'll start off with Apex Legends, probably the fan favorite Battle Royale right now. It seems like Respawn is just knocking it out of the park developing this thing. So definitely a good pick if you like battle royales or first person shooters. The ever popular Fortnite. Yes, people clown on it for being a kid's game and uh, you, you know, you just build and stuff. But honestly, if you see what that game's done, you know, you have all these different characters from crazy different franchises. It's basically the first metaverse. You know, the thing that Facebook wants to build, but they can't. It's cool. If you like this kind of game, if you like battle royales or silly, fun games, I mean, it, it's pretty cool. One of the best FPS right now actually is Valorant. And this is a great game. Comes from Riot Games of all people, and I will not be mentioning their other game. No. But Valorant's cool. It's a fun FPS. It has some pretty serious competitive sides to it if you want to do that. But in terms of a casual game, you can just jump in there with your friends. No one pays anything to play the game. And you all just have a whole lot of fun. Path of Exile. This is a more serious game, kind of like Diablo. And it has an absolutely staggering amount of content that you can all get for free. I mean, whatever it is, there's some kind of monetization because otherwise they couldn't keep developing the game. But but it's a great trade-off. I think the amount of content here in Path of Exile that you get for free is absolutely fantastic. The last one I'm going to talk about today is probably no stranger to you, but Final Fantasy XIV Online has a free trial that includes the base game and the award-winning expansion Heavensward. I'm not going to say the whole thing. If you like MMOs, if you like Final Fantasy, you like anime, social games, games where you can be a cool warrior or do big magic things or, you know, live a second life, this is the one for you. I've played this game a lot. I mean, who has it at this point, right? It's a fantastic game. I play as a black mage and I just act like Megamine from Konosuba. And that is all the best ways you can save money playing games. If you found any of these tips useful, smash the like button and I'll catch you in the next one.